I just went on to complete accurate tax returns after that. I know everybody here wishes they had a reset button <laughs> that they could just press it or click it and it would you could make a situation better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in a matter of speaking, I clicked on a reset button about a year ago. And what happened was I became a baby all over again. One who had eaten solid food too soon too many times and at the most unpredictable, most random times. Such is my life with a paralyzed stomach called gastroparesis. Does anybody here want to say that word really fast five times? Come on, I dare you. No one? No one is that adventurous on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, well. But, uh, but anyway, I, um, so I was, so I bet you're probably wondering, you, you have all these questions for me about, about this illness you may have never heard of. Well, I'm going to ask them and answer them. What caused it? How did it happen? You'd have an easier time trying to figure out how a woman got pregnant. Are you on some special diets? Maybe gluten-free or FODMAP or keto? No, no, no. I just have a new way of eating that has rendered me more high maintenance than I ever have been in my entire life. <laughs> I have to remember to, whenever I order a sandwich or a burger, to not get lettuce, tomato, onions, and pickles. I have to remember, I have to puree vegetables. I have to peel the skin off of apples and potatoes. Here I am trying to get out of the kitchen and I'm back in the kitchen even more so than I ever have been. I mean, it's a wonder I haven't made it here this afternoon. And Pat and, and okay, there, the, there goes the, the bikers. All right. So I uh, so all I gotta say is Sally's got nothing on me, but you can have what I'm having. So. Were there any special tests that you had to had to take? So how how they figure it out? Torture, pure torture. In late October, I had what's called a gastric emptying study, and it was it was so around the time that everybody was at a costume party or at a haunted house or, how, or whatever else you're of a mind to do. I was at the outpatient unit at Park West Hospital where they fed me hospital food. <laughs> and that hospital food was scrambled eggs, two slices of toast, and one eight ounce bottle of water. And, that, and those eggs had a poison in it. Oh no, not a poison, a radioactive tracer. And it bears mentioning that while I was eating, eating this, they played Monster Mash on the radio at a low volume. <laughs> and then I did not know this, but they actually timed my eating. I was to eat and drink everything within about, within, within 10 minutes. Oh, gee, I did not know that I was in an audition for Woman Be Food. <laughs> Surely there must be some, some food you actually enjoy eating and making. Yes, that's right. Smoothies. <laughs> I sought some, some advice from a dietitian, and she told me to make my own smoothies. That meant get my blender out, one I hadn't used since I first got married 17 years ago. The great thing is it still works. It, it still worked when I, hooked, when I, when I got it, when I got it up, when I, after I washed it. And I made a smoothie 
and I went about my day. I work from home. And while I was working, I, I thought of all these great ideas. I mean, I was just, I mean, I didn't know where these ideas had come from. So I finished the smoothie, went back to the kitchen, and I realized I have a rock star blender. <laughs> the setting number for smoothies, 11. <laughs> What's, what's so significant about 11? Well, it's one more than 10. <laughs> well, why not just settle for 10? Well, 11, you have to, I have to ask myself, where do I go from here? I mean, where do I go from here? I mean, 11 is that extra push over the cliff that makes me realize there is more about gastroparesis in hard rock music than I realized. Mm. Let me start off with my all time favorite band, Heart. Mm. They have a song for every situation of my life. And this certain song I'm thinking of is not one of their hits, but it's a song that goes something like, I'll chew you up and I'll spit you out, never want to know your name. Mm. The name of the song is called White Lightning and Wine. And I'm going to say one word that will have everybody looking it up. Cowbell. <laughs> I can't be a woman of the 80s and not talk about Kip Winger. He's nice looking. He's talented. I've met him twice. And he is very down to earth, very laid back. At least with me he is. But there's just one thing about him. He doesn't understand gastroparesis. I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but if I do, I have to keep myself from telling him, dude, you just don't understand gastroparesis. That line of, I can't get enough, I'm still hungry. No, we get, we, we get full easily. But I'm not at a complete loss because I get to answer that seemingly rhetorical question in Boston's song, in that, in that chorus of, are you feeling satisfied? Yes, guys, I am, easily. Then we have the late Jack Russell of Great White in his fun 1989 hit, Once Bitten Twice Shy, you can't remember when you got your last meal and you don't know just how a woman feels. I'm Julia Pope, I'll be under that red, that red canopy. I'll see y'all next time.